Hi, this is Michelle from The Little Things and More. Today I'm making a video about Homo Global figurines. I'm going to show you today how you can identify them, uh, how I picture them for my auctions, how I list them, uh, basically all the information that you would maybe want to know or need to know if you were going to list a Hummel figurine uh, to attract the people who actually collect them or potential buyers. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. There are many different uh, types of Hummels. There are the Hummel figurines, there are Hummel plates, Hummel bells, Hummel plaques. Uh, there's all sorts of different kinds of merchandise that is um, under the Hummel name. Today I'm just going to focus on the figurines themselves and how to identify them and their markings. If you find a piece that's in the box, that's easy for you because in the box, in this original box, it's actually going to tell you the name of it'll it'll oops, excuse me. It'll tell you the name right there on the box. This particular figurine is the Forever Yours figurine and it also has the number on there and it has also the Hummel 793. Now what you need to do once you identify what Hummel you have you can then go and look up the trademark information. Uh, if you don't have a box, you don't really have to worry too much because it's still easy to find the information that you need. Uh, usually every Hummel will have the name of its piece somewhere on the base. And in this particular one, it was Pleasant Journey. Also, you can figure out trademarks by looking at the bottom because the bottom is going to have the name of the piece usually and it will also have this right here this is what you need to know for the trademark information and we'll get into that in just a little bit now also if you find a piece that has something like this on it it's not a signature your piece is not signed in the factory at every different part of the process of making this piece it's initialed. It's signed off by the person or the artist who hand painted it. So this is not a signature. This is actually initialed. So if you put it in your auction that you've got a signed piece and then somebody gives you a message and says that's not signed and they'll tell you it's initialed. If they're a real collector. If not, they might not know it's not signed. I use a site, and I'll put the link below, that shows pictures of all the different trademarks and the years. The trademark one is the full crown trademark, and these are what anything, any figurine that is a trademark one will have this identification on the bottom. Same as if it's a trademark two, it's going to have the full B, and also they always usually have the V underneath the B in trademark number two, and that's from 1940 to 1959, like it has listed here. And this will also give you all sorts of different information and history on the product as well. And it goes on all the way to trademark 8. There's trademark 3, still has the B, but it says West Germany underneath. Then there's trademark 4, trademark 5. This is where the Goebbels added in and in big letters and the B's changed around. Trademark 6 is missing the B. That's from 1979 to 91. And then there's trademark 7 and trademark 8. So this particular site makes it really easy to determine what your trademark is. Once I've determined my uh, piece identification, the name of whatever the piece is, I've identified the trademark. I come over to this um, PDF file that I have, and I found this online. I will look for the link for this. I think I basically Googled Hummel trademark values, and this guide that I was able to download popped up. And uh, what you can do now, the, like say I have um, the Little Fiddler 
and I have the 5.75 to 6.5 inch size. And my trademark is trademark 1. Well, then this is my guide as to what the value of this Hummel was um, and this may not be the exact value now, but it's a good guideline that you can go on when you're looking up eBay or anywhere else that you may be selling your Hummel figurines, Etsy, any, just about anywhere that you would sell them online. Uh, you'll see the low ballers who are willing or didn't do their research selling it for really, really low prices, and then you'll see the ones in the middle, and then you'll see the ones at the very high end who are going by this number. Uh, you know, they think, oh, Little Fiddler, trademark one, $400. Most likely, you're not going to get $400. I usually tend to get somewhere in the middle of this price range. Sometimes it's on the higher end, though. It depends on the piece. You can see as the years go up, the value goes down because these are the later years and the value is a little less. There's still a nice value in this piece, though. But, for instance, like I was saying here, a trademark eight, that says 135 here probably would be listed at about 40 to 50 dollars online. Okay, now we'll go into a couple of my listings so I can show you sort of, um, you know, make sense to what it is that I've been talking about. This particular piece is a um, figurine. It's number 186. I always put the number of it in the, in the title because if you're collecting and you're looking for specific piece, you're going to search with that number. This one is Sweet Music. It's a trademark three and it's a five and a half inch figurine. It's always important to put in the size of the figurine in your listing as well uh, because a collector will look for that information. They will look for the information on what size. Some people like the smaller ones. Some people like the bigger ones. Um, I always put in the condition that I see no chips, no cracks, no signs of repair because a lot of times people have them and they sell them and they've been repaired. Uh, this particular one, normally I would put no crazing, but this particular one you can see the crazing. And the crazing is all the little spider web like looking design that you can see on the face. That's about the best I can explain what crazing is on a piece of pottery or a piece of china. It looks like it's been cracked in a spider web fashion. It's not really on the outside, it's on the inside. And people like to know, you know, they're, they're going to want to know that's there. You, they wouldn't want to buy something and then get it and have all of this crazing all over it because it's really not in pristine condition. Okay, now we're going to look at this piece and see how I actually came about identifying it. I am not sure if this is one that is in its original box, but if we're looking at the pictures of this particular figurine, and I try to take pictures of everything. As you'll notice, there's even crazing on the base here, as well as all up and down the arm and on the face on this particular one. I take pictures of all angles so that everybody can see just about every little part of this figurine. So there's no room for doubt that there's no chip. There aren't any chips or any flaws that might be there. And we're looking on the bottom here, and this is not a very clear picture, so this might not actually be a very good example on this one. But here is the bottom trademark that we're looking for. Now, I say it is a trademark three, so as you can see, it has the B very slightly, and it has the B in the middle. All right, excuse me about that. All right, anyway, so you can see the V slightly, the little B in the middle, and then there's West Germany here. Now, if we go on over to this site here, you can see there's the, there's the V, there's the little B, and there's the West Germany. So I know now that this piece was made between 1960 and 1972. Okay, and that particular piece was Sweet Music, so what I do then is I just do a control F in my uh, screen, and I type in Sweet Music on my PDF, and I search it. It comes up, and this is a trademark three, 
and this particular one is the is the five to five and a half inches and for trademark three it says the value of that one is a hundred and seventy five dollars that's the value guide on the sweet music figurines and as you can see mine has crazing so I actually have it listed at $61.19. I don't have it anywhere near what the value is because it does have some damage. The next one we'll look at is the Pleasant Journey. It's number 406 and it is a trademark six and it does have the original box. This is a larger piece. These are really sought after. It's a six and a quarter inch piece. I have this one listed for $440. Um, I, do, I put in the condition that it's mint uh, original box. It has its original insert. On this one, I have seen no chips, cracking, or evidence of any repair. I try to do all my figurines sometimes on the blue background. Sometimes they look good on the black background, depending on the piece. And as you can see, this particular one right here, the pleasant journey is right there on the piece. So that tells you, without even looking at the box, what you have. Okay, now on the bottom, you'll notice the little trademark, which is right, uh, the trademark is right there. You can see that. And then what I will do is I will go back to my trademark site so I can verify that. And we already know because when we look at it, it's missing the B. It just has a little dot. It has the global and it has West Germany. So if we go over here to CMK6, it's missing the B, which means this piece is from 1979 to 1991. Then what we do is we go to the PDF file and we then can put in to the search Pleasant Journey. All right, we put that in and we search it. Pleasant Journey will come up. And this one here, we go to trademark six, and this says $1,500. Like I said, $1,500 is not what you can expect to get. That's what it says the value guide is. But if you go back to eBay and uh, you go into your seller or your search button. So if we go in here and we do a Hummel Pleasant Journey search for the figurine, it'll bring up a bunch of stuff. It'll bring up the plate because that's the Hummel the Pleasant Journey plate. And here we have one that they don't even have um, the actual trademark or they just have it worth 500 but they're selling it for 299 uh, here's one that's TMK6. They've got it listed for $365. Here's another one. They've got it listed for $399. Let's click on sold and see what some of them have sold for. You'll see trademark 6, $150. And here's another one, trademark 6, $277, $237, $249, $250, $249. So it's nowhere near the $1,500 that the, says that the value is, but at least it gives you a very good guideline to go by. And I am not in a big hurry to sell mine, so I have mine listed at $440.63, and I do have the ability for the buyer to make a best offer. I always try to put the best offer in there because, you know, if it's not too low, I would be willing to obviously sell it at a lower price. The most of them, the majority, have gone in the $200 to $300 range. Okay, so now on this one, I have it titled Homo Global Number 110 Slash Zero Let's Sing, Trademark 5, Size. I always spell out size because I figure it gets pulled up in a search better than the F and Z. Three and one quarter inch figurine. Of course, I also put the nice piece. I see no chips, cracks, crazing, or signs of repair. 
But the reason why I'm focusing on this number now is it is another way to search in the PDF file. If we come down to the PDF file, you'll notice 110 slash 0 is let's sing, and it is the 3 and 3 quarter size figurine. Now if we go back to the figurine, it is 3 and a quarter size, 3 inch to 3 and a quarter size. This particular one I have is a TMK5. Let's look at some of the pictures here. Okay, if we look at the bottom, it has the B, is a B, the big Goebel, and the West Germany. It has the signature, not the signature, the initials of the person who hand painted it. Now if we go up here to our TMK5, we will see that this is the exact uh, trademark that we have on here. Right there. So I feel comfortable enough to come back down here to this. We go into the trademark 5, and it says the value of this is about $95. So when I list for this particular piece in eBay, I listed it for $53.54. And I also added the best offer option there. Okay, the next one we'll take a look at is this Hummel Global Lost Sheet. It's number 68 slash 2. It's a trademark 7. There's the original box with it. And it's 4 and a half inches in size. I listed all that in the title. I also listed the same that it was in its original box and that I saw no cracks, chips, or phasing, or evidence of repair. I like to take lots of pictures that shows every single angle. We're allowed 12 pictures and I use uh, about every picture that I can use that's free. Uh, this particular one does have the title of the piece right on the base. And if we look here on the bottom, it says this one was a final issue in 1992, and that alone gives you an idea of the trademark because it actually gives you the year on the bottom of the piece. And it has the global, the Germany, and the B on the bottom. So if we come up to our website that tells us what we need to look for, we'll notice that CMK7 is 1991 to 2000, and the piece actually said the year was 1992 making this a trademark 7. If you still wanted to look at the trademark, it looks exactly the same as the base on the bottom. And now that we have this information, we can go back to our PDF file and we can type in the search lost sheet. When we bring up lost sheet, it gives us the tunnel number, which is 443. And there's obviously another lost sheet in there because that could this could maybe not be the plate, it could be something else. You see it says fifteen point seven five inches and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for this one down here, which is the lost sheep, and I believe on the auction the number was sixty eight slash two. Which if you go down here and you see sixty eight slash two lost sheep, four and a quarter to four and a half inches. And we have a trademark 7. So the value of a trademark 7 is $85. And you'll notice that it said it was last issued in 1992. So therefore, when you come all the way over to trademark 8, you'll see a 0 because they didn't make it after 1992, which was trademark 7. This particular one, it says valued at $85. And I believe that I have it listed for $32.99 because like I said previously they are usually not worth the amount that it says that their value is. It's the guidelines that you can use when you're listing your item. And with that being a guideline I always always look up completed and sold listings and I also look up active listings because I like to see exactly where the price points are currently and a lot of times, like you'll see, this is very this this is nine ninety nine. That doesn't mean a lot. It might not have its original box. It might just be the figure, so they're listing it for nine ninety nine. 
this is just a box, nothing else. They're selling it for five dollars. Then you can see that you have one for seventeen ninety nine. And you can see the different ways that everybody does take their pictures. Um, and then you see $24.75, $20, $12.99, $49, like I said, I have mine listed for I have mine listed for $35. Uh, only because um, I figured I would start at a price that was a little bit higher. And then I would be able to take best offers if I needed to. Here's one that sold for $15.75 with an auction. For the Hummels, I don't like to put them at auction. I like to put them at buy it now. They don't seem to ever go for what I would like them to go for if I put them at auction. If I do put them at auction, I will put them for the lowest price that I am willing to accept for the piece. There's one that sold for $27.99, buy it now. As you can see, $27.99, buy it now, as opposed to $14.99 at auction. The last one we're going to look at is this particular listing that I made. This is one of the first listings that I did for the Hummel. And one of the things that I can point out right now that is wrong with this listing that needs to be edited is I do not have any gallery pictures. There's only this one picture that people on a mobile phone will usually see. And I always try to put all the pictures that can be scrolled in my listing. Because now I am aware that if you're on a mobile phone, basically you look at the, a lot of people or buyers will look at the pictures and they will look at the condition and that's what they base it on. So if someone were to look at this listing on a mobile phone, this is the only picture that they would see. They would not see all of the other pictures that I have listed with this item. So when you're listing something that you want everybody to see in detail, what the piece looks like, make sure that you always make it gallery view in your listing. It's if you're using a third party, this particular listing was with the third party, and that's why I didn't click that option for the gallery. So I will be going in and revising that by basically saving the pictures in the listing to my desktop and then just adding them in to revise the listing so that they're there. Anyway, this one is called Forever Yours. It is number 793, CMK7. And it has the box with the certificate of authenticity. In this particular situation, I have the box. The box has the number of the Hummel. It has the size of the Hummel. And it tells me what the name of the Hummel is. So it gives me basically all the information that I really need to do a basic search on completed and active listing. I have made sure that I've taken pictures of every angle of the figurine so that the potential buyer and see all the details, if there's any flaws, and there are none on this piece. And basically, it'll tell them all, you know, do I want this or do I not want this? Because, you know, everything is there for you to see. There's nothing to be left to the imagination. You'll notice here, again, it does have the initials of the painter. It has, it was from the MI Hummel Club. And then it has the trademark. It has the global. Germany and then the B underneath. And as you can see, if we come on over to our website, you can see that it says Trademark 7. If I move this on over here like this, it'll say Trademark 7, Global, Germany, the B underneath. That matches up with the picture that's underneath uh, the base of the figurine. Then I go to the PDF file. And I see here that 793 forever yours, four inches. And this particular one is a trademark seven, and its value is fifty dollars. I have this particular one listed for thirty-seven ninety-nine. And basically, what you would do again before you would uh, list it is you would go ahead and you would. Search your completed listing, search your sold listing, search your active listing, and then you come up with whatever price point that you feel comfortable with selling the item. So 
basically what we've gone over today is the Hummel figurine, how to identify the name of the Hummel figurine, how to identify the trademark, how to identify the size, and any information that you might need by looking at the figure or the box, the website where you can actually match up your trademark, the PDF file that gives you sort of the guideline of what the value is, and how you can easily look them up in completed, sold, and active listings. I hope this information helps you out if you're interested in selling Hummel figurines or if you just are interested in learning new things about different things that you could sell. Hopefully this was some good content for you. Next week, I believe I'm going to be doing um, a segment on depression glass. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment below, and have a great day. Bye.